one dish, two photographers, two different styles and setups. Let's do this! Welcome back to Use Your Noodles. Uh, it's been a while but I'm back and today we're gonna do things a little bit differently. In just a minute I'll be, I'll be joined by my dear friend and food photographer Sabrina Dietz from The Purple Avocado. We did a really really fun project together and today we're gonna show you the photos that came out, the behind the scenes and we're gonna give you a bunch of really useful tips along the way. So please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss any future videos. So let's start! Welcome Sabrina, it's really really lovely to have you. Uh, so for everyone who doesn't know Sabrina, we actually met in 2015 when we both uh, started our blogs, we met online uh, and we immediately mutually loved each other's work, so we stayed in contact since then. Um, and we could actually talk about this the whole day, but let's uh, introduce Sabrina. So Sabrina is a food photographer, stylist, videographer and educator from Germany and she also has a line of her own printed bag backdrops. Hmm. Hi Anya, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, always fun to hang out, talk about photography. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay, Sabrina, so could you give us a short brief on the project that we did? Yes, absolutely. So we both had the idea that we shoot the same dish and for that we chose pumpkin soup, obviously, because autumn and cozy vibes and also because soup is just uh, such a great dish to style in very different and unique ways and always different. So um, yeah, that's the basic idea and we decided to add a little twist um, in a way that you, Anya, would shoot it in a dark and moody style and I would go for light and bright. Um, besides the light, um, there were of course bound to be very like different results. We're both two different photographers, we make different decisions, we choose different props and colors and of course um, developed our own unique style over time. So we wanted to show how immense the change and the differences can be between two photos that are actually showing the same. And today we want to discuss this a little bit more. Yeah, and also one thing that we wanted to kind of showcase is that how important it is when you're working with a client to have a brief, a very detailed brief, because if you only get pumpkin soup and bright and airy photo, even if you both did the bright and airy photo, it would be totally different. Uh, so yeah, I would just say that this is kind of the outtake also from that project, that the brief with the client really needs to be very detailed in order to get the right result uh, for the client. Absolutely. Yeah. So Anya, what was your idea for the shoot? Uh, so obviously pumpkin soup is one of my favorite soups to eat, but also I really love to shoot it. Uh, so I was very, very excited when we decided on the subject. Um, and my idea was uh, like a gloomy, rainy day, which I often associate with pumpkin soup. And since my part of the project was going more to the moody side, uh, I decided that my story was going to be happening somewhere in an old cottage in the countryside. Um, so I imagined in my head like a kitchen with stone walls, old wooden floor, wooden counter, you know, someone in an old linen apron cooking there. Like outside it's rainy, it's cold, but inside it's really nice and cozy and warm. Um, so I also wanted to show kind of that contrast between warm and cold uh, in the photo. I obviously didn't really add all that elements that I just described in the photo, which I totally could, but um, they were just my guidelines for all the creative decisions, for the props, for the light, for the backdrop, for everything. I went back to that story. So what about you, Sabrina? Um, yeah. I as you can see, my result is a lot different from yours. Mm -hmm. um, first, I want to say um, I basically shoot pumpkin soup 
at least once every year. <laughs> I, I just love doing it and like looking back, seeing how my style has changed, how mm -hmm. I've improved, but also coming up with new styling ideas every year is just a lovely challenge. I can recommend mm -hmm. doing it. My vision for this shoot was to achieve a more minimalist and clean look, um, but still get this like gloomy and moody autumn vibe that you just described so nicely. Mm -hmm. um, and many people think that light and bright doesn't go for autumn or winter moods, that it's just uh, something reserved for the summer. Mm -hmm. And I would disagree. Um, it really just depends on how you play with your light. You can have dramatic looking photos, even if you're using like mainly light props and backgrounds and mm -hmm. like very like illuminate your scene very much. Um. Yeah, so I would say it's probably the similar similar with uh, summer photos. We often associate it, uh, associate summer with bright photos, but they could actually good, look really good in the darker style. So I would say that yes, you yes, shouldn't really absolutely. limit yourself. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, despite the light and bright prompt I got, I wanted to get this autumn feeling in my photos. And for that, I chose my big octagon softbox, like really big <laughs> softbox <laughs> with a grid to create a, a very soft light, but also intense uh, shadows. Mm -hmm. um, and to not make it look like a summer shoot, I opted for a lower light source mm -hmm. that would result in longer shadows. You can see it in the spoons in the front of the image very well. Mm -hmm. um, for me, longer shadows always uh, signify like a low hanging sun, like yeah. maybe in a September evening sun, like this golden hour gloomy yeah. feeling rather than like a bright summer day. Yeah, and it looks really, really nice. Oh, thank you. Um, and besides that, I also used some reflectors on the, mm -hmm. like for one shot on the left and for the other one in the front to lighten up a few shadows a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you can lighten things up later in post-production. But my principle is, if you can do it in the shoot, don't wait till post. That gives you more control and the end result yeah. even a bit more natural like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's almost never the same. So, obviously, I had the dark and moody. And often we think that dark and moody should really be very, very dark. And I didn't want to do that here. Um, I wanted to kind of go a little bit more middle darkness. <laughs> and I wa what I wanted to do here is amplify the softness and the warmness. Because for me, uh, pumpkin soup and this late summer, early autumn is a really... A time where the light is really 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 soft but at the same time it's still quite bright it's not very dark like it's not November and there's fog outside so that's what I wanted to go with here um, and that's also the reason why I chose a slightly lighter brighter colored uh, backdrop uh, I chose a warm toned uh, wood uh, instead of going kind of a light dark wood which might be the first choice for for many winter photo shoots uh, but here I think this was a better decision and also since I wanted to show that light the, not the lightness also lightness but softness um, I wanted to do the same with light and just like you you mentioned you also wanted to, that, to do that really soft light and I also wanted to do that here uh, and that's why I didn't go with a small soft box I actually used my window and I place the diffuser on the window and then flash outside. So I basically created a large soft box. Um, and then I used my curtains, which I often use on either side to block the light and just make it a little bit more narrow. And that made that moody feel um, in the photos. And then I just used smaller modifiers. So you mentioned you used uh, reflectors. I didn't use yeah. any reflectors. I used some blockers to block light from certain parts of the photo just to make it a little bit more dark on certain areas. Um, and basically this was my setup for 
all of my photos I just changed the modifiers just a little bit but those were really really minor changes from photo to photo all in all it was that setup yeah also I love the results and I think it's interesting that you say you basically blocked out more light while mm -hmm. I was uh, lightening some uh, areas in my image and that is one of the differences in how you style yeah. dark moody and light and bright yeah exactly okay sabrina so we also wanted to talk a little bit about color so let us know what was your thought process behind the colors so when it comes to colors i'm usually really a lover of neutrals i mm -hmm. i love everything neutral sandy beige muddy gray earthy browns you know the drill um, but for this shoot, I really felt like experimenting a little and my main goal here was to complement the very bright and warm orange of the soup as best as possible. Um, and I wanted to add a subtle, like interesting little contrast that could implement in the background and in the props as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I was thinking about uh, Thai basil. Like, you know, they have this mm -hmm. really purple, yeah. vibrant leaves. I love them and I really wanted to add them to my photo. So I chose this contrast of purple and orange, which is not really complementary. You know, it would actually be uh, orange and blue, Pur purple and yellow. Yeah. But I felt like purple orange is really just what I want right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different. It's unexpected. And yeah. I think that's also why it works. Exactly. Like mm -hmm. you have the cool tones of the basil um, in contrast with the warm soup to make it really pop. Mm -hmm. um, I, I found it quite unique and interesting. And uh, the rest of the image is relatively colorless. Like you have some purple like subtleties, but the rest really gives all the space to the orange soup and the little pop of color in the middle of it and yeah that was basically um, how I was going with colors mm -hmm. so you? yeah so I was going I was thinking the same thing so I didn't want to just use the oranges and the browns um, I've done that before so I wanted to do something different um, and also my idea was to go with that color contrast with the warmth color warmth contrast so warm soup and then something a little bit more cooler toned mm -hmm. um, and that's why I chose sage uh, because I think sage has that green hue which is a little bit on the cooler side it's a little bit towards yes. the blue mm -hmm. and it's also a little bit more desaturated and calm which I think goes really nicely in that story also um, it's delicious with pumpkin soup it's <laughs> obviously very delicious <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically that was uh, my idea and also one thing I really like to do is to add different hues of oranges. So I have that orange in the soup and then I have a bunch of pumpkins in different oranges and I also went to pick some berries. You can see the berries in the photos um, and also funny story. Um, and you probably know this, that photographers go and pick stuff in public places <laughs> all the time. Uh, so I went to a park, like a really big park in the national, in the capital city. Um, and people were looking at me really strangely, like suspiciously when I was <laughs> picking that stuff. And it's really prickly. It has long, long thorns. Uh, so I couldn't just pick up everything in half a minute and just go. And it took me at least five minutes of really careful picking everything. So I didn't prick my fingers. So yeah, that's yeah that's the life of a food photographer yeah <laughs> i was basically going to five different stores to find the thai basil i wanted and a yeah. uh, complementing purple uh, fabric that i did not have <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh so so if i just continue with how i styled everything um it's also very important when you have food to style the dish really properly and to know what you have to do so it goes with the story and everything so my idea was rustic and everything and that had to also convey in the photo in the dish itself uh, so my soup was a little bit more thick than yours quite a bit 
yeah. I could actually do the swirls and the swirls were visible. Um, so it also had a, a little bit more texture. Yours was more smooth uh, and mine had a little bit of a texture. And also one thing I had to do because it was very heavy, I also had to make more layers for it to make sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just looks much better. Um, I added some cream, but with the dense soups like this one that I had, if you just use heavy cream, it will flow off and it will look really, really awful. Uh, it will just spread everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it just spreads everywhere. So what I did was actually mix the heavy cream with some cream cheese to get the consistency just right. And then I could do a nice swirl that would stay there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, sometimes I, I you have to add look. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love how you made this soup look so rustic and uh, like I, I really want to dive into it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would eat soup every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so also with the layers, I added like a bunch of seeds. Uh, I added some spices, some oil. So it had kind of that many layers that would support that rustic feel. So everything's not perfect. It's more heavy. It's more <laughs> cozy. Um, so it just looks much different to what you did. So you can also let us know your um, yes. about your styling. Yeah, as I said, I love the rustic style of yours um, and also the styling decisions you made. They would have not worked for my image because no. I was going for light and airy, like mm -hmm. the the light is light and bright and the soup had to have the same feeling, otherwise it would have just yeah. not worked. So my soup was much thinner, it had more like a silky and creamy texture mm -hmm. and also for the styling I wanted to keep it minimal but still like not just like a solid uh, yeah you had to you know, add some elements on to make not it just interesting. a clean surface you yeah. always want to add something like drizzles textures so i went for roasted sesame seeds and made my creamy swirl like you mm -hmm. said you liked how i did it um, yeah. and you can see in the video like lots of the cream i pour will just dissolve into the soup and is not mm -hmm. visible that gives you a lot of options to actually mess things up. Yeah. Just do it again and again. Um, you can either use like a little pouring uh, mm -hmm. a vessel or just go in with a spoon and mm -hmm. be a bit more detailed. Uh, yeah, so that was the base. And then I added the little pops of color, the Thai basil leaves. And that was basically it. It was actually a very, I, it's, it's meditative <laughs> styling soup. I just love it. It's you, you can make some mistakes. You can mess things up. It doesn't really do anything with the soup. It just adds to the coziness you want to portray. I think we covered a lot and I hope you got a really good look into the creative process and how we did things in this photo shoot. Um, and now we have another announcement. So Sabrina and I are actually doing a live workshop uh, together sometimes next year. So if you're interested in that, yay, I'll actually put links to our waiting list in the description box below so you can check it out. So I would like to thank you again, Sabrina, for doing this really, really fun project with me. It was very, very lovely having you. Yeah, thank you, Anya, for having me and thank you to you all for watching. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.